Hey, Kev, let's let's follow this trail over here. This looks like there might be something waiting down there. All right. Hey, wait a minute. Do you hear that? Yeah, I thought it was just me. What the heck is that? I don't know what that is. Whoa, do you smell that, too? That's unbelievable. Hey, look. What the? Hey, look, those, those branches are moving over there. What the heck is that? Holy cow, is that what I think it is? Look at that thing. Think it... Oh my god. It's a freaking Sasquatch. Welcome to the Bigfoot Terror in the Woods Sightings and Encounters podcast. I'm your host, W.J. Sheehan. Hello, everybody. And welcome once again to our podcast. By the time you listen to this, it will indeed be the new year. And I wish you and yours a happy and healthy new year. And may I introduce you to my brother. It's a little odd doing it this way. I want to bring Kevin in. Kev, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, that's right. Happy New Year, everybody out there. Let's hope 2022 is a great one. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we'll ditch this Omicron, Covidon, Mamadon, whatever we got will be gone by the end of this year. Oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Just forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done with it. You know why you're so stuffed up from sawdust working on those Adirondack chairs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it could penetrate you to have an effect That's on your right. body. That's right. I got the natural filters going. Forget the mask. <laughs> I'm like full of sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> you got the woodworker antibodies. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like filtration in your nostrils and your pores. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as Bill said, I was working on uh, some Adirondack chairs today to put around the fire pit out in the backyard. And uh, the weather here in North Carolina has been spectacular. I mean, I like the cold and I like to change the seasons, but I got to tell you, I'm loving this Christmas week at 70 degrees. It's been all right. Yeah, yeah, I was a little jealous when you told me that. Uh, You know, it's a rare, you know, Kev, obviously used to live up here. It's a rare occasion we see that kind of number. Anywheres, you know, December, January, February, you know, it does happen once in a while, but uh, it, it's certainly not the norm, you know. But we're not we're not suffering here. Yeah, yeah we're break, we're breaking the records here too. I mean, it's uh, this is a little out of the norm, but uh, it's been great, uh, you know. And I don't have heat in my garage, so I've been out there working on these chairs. And otherwise, if it was twenty five degrees, I wouldn't be out there. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, tell the truth. Do you have, like, a This Old House poster on the wall in your garage? You know something? If you're listening out there, <laughs> folks, I'm a devotee of This Old House. I need, like, a This Old House <laughs> poster. I don't have anything good out there. I, you know, I might even need, like, a snap-on tool calendar or something out there. You know, you should write a letter. <laughs> you should write a letter, like, to Norm Abram and ask him if he'd send you an autographed picture or something. He'd send me like an autographed picture of his Labrador Retriever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was funny. But yeah, it's been good. And uh, sorry, folks, we did take a break last week for Christmas. So, uh, you know, not not because anything was wrong. We just needed a little bit of downtime. Uh, one weekend off for us. But we're back at it and I'm fully charged up and ready to go. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. And by the way, folks, I skipped over this in the beginning. But if you don't know me or my brother... Oh, you've never listened to us before. I've written a series of books entitled Bigfoot Terror in the Woods. And all of them, nine volumes, are available at Amazon in paperback and ebook. And if you like to listen while you work, you can get one through eight in audio format at Audible, iTunes, and Amazon as well. So jump on the bandwagon. I've had a lot of people writing in to me, Kev, telling me I got all nine of your books. One guy said he didn't buy any stocking stuffers this year. He bought all audio books. I know. I saw that. I'm actually going to cover that letter, Bill. I thought it's fantastic. That's my kind of guy. 
<laughs> <laughs> so some people think my contests aren't rigged, but with a guy like that, it's definitely rigged. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you might have to, while you're sending me that autographed <laughs> copy of a book for New Year's, you might want to send him one, too. <laughs> I'm just saying, Kev, you know, I, uh, it's hard to overlook such an individual. <laughs> I know, but you overlook your brother. Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, let me ask you something, brother. Have you purchased all the audio books for your stocking? <laughs> you're, you're laughing a little bit like Newman from Seinfeld. <laughs> it's funny you said that because uh, uh, a nurse practitioner that I know might get the uh, hospital. Uh, he sent me something uh, via text message the other day, and I made some crack at him. And it was funny. I mean, I have to admit, you know, once in a while I say something funny. And uh, so what does he send me back? It's a picture of Newman rocking back and forth in the chair, making one of his sinister laughs. It just <laughs> kept, like, repeating, like, the same movement, you know. But it was oh, yeah. Newman, you know. <laughs> the mail keeps coming and coming and coming. <laughs> what a Love <character>. Newman. <laughs> what a character actor that guy was. They were all great. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So what do we have in our cryptids in the news and other oddities segment? Yes, this week we're going to your neighbor state, Bill, the state of New Jersey, oh. the Garden State. Wow. Yeah, we're going to talk about a creature, and this is kind of weird how they name it, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. I didn't hear of it before. Somebody wrote in about it a while back, and it was on my list, so I checked it out. And uh, the name of it is Big Red Eye. Big Red Eye? Have you heard of this one? I haven't. Okay, so the confusing part is I specifically said I... And every article about it, including some from uh, television, from CBS2 in New Jersey, talk about it as Big Red Eye. But it's basically a Sasquatch-like creature with red eyes. So I don't know what happened along the way that they only had called, talk about one eye, hmm. but it's a creature with red eyes. Wow. And that's the first thing, of course, that came to my mind was the glowing red eyes of one of these Sasquatches that are seen. Yeah, but I don't know why it's always written. I mean, if you Google it, it's always singular red eye. Well, I mean, just which... think of Popeye. He was just Popeye. He wasn't Popeye's. <laughs> <laughs> Although, <laughs> Listen, man, you know, people seem to like when we talk about this old time sh uh, shtick. Do you remember the Popeye episode? where Popeye was on the phone talking to Olive Oil, and mm. Bluto climbs up the telephone pole out in the street <laughs> and just pulls the wires apart and cuts in. <laughs> so Pop I don't remember it specifically, but as you're describing it, oh, yeah. certainly. Yeah, I remember I, it. I'm sure I saw that one. So listen to this. So Popeye's about to tell Olive Oil how much he loves her. And Bluto cuts in and says this. Yeah, when it comes to looks, you ain't there. You're a rag, a skank, and a hank of hair. And then he puts the <laughs> wires back together. And, oh. and Olive is like, Popeye, I'll never speak to you again. And he's like, Olive, Olive. <laughs> she slammed the phone out. You know how Bluto was always trying to get him and work him over, you know. And I'll never forget that. Well, I, I think he got him that time. Yeah, but it's like I always say, Kip, that stuff wasn't made for kids. Oh, no. I mean, that was that was like an adult cartoon that kids sat down and watched and wondered, like, what the heck is going on here, you know? <laughs> yeah, most of, them, most of them had a lot of uh, double entendre meaning, you know what I mean? <laughs> the kids never picked up on it, but as an adult, you pick up on it and you're laughing like crazy at it. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I can't resist. Let's <laughs> no problem. So yeah, so this monster, big red eye, uh -huh. or as I might like to call him, big red eyes. Uh -huh. um, you know his existence and reports go back to the 1970s, 
mostly in northwest New Jersey or northwestern New Jersey, Mm -hmm. around a place called High Point State Park. Mm. Yeah, and it's typically described as New Jersey's version of a Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. So kind of seven feet tall, you know, 400 pounds, but with these glowing red eyes. Now, I have to say that uh, my first blush about High Point is that that is uh, a relatively speaking hot spot for UFO activity. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and if anybody has any info relative to that that's listening, I'd like you to uh, chime in with us at BigfootTerrorInTheWoods.com and just hit the contact link and tell me what you know, if anything, about uh, High Point. But go ahead, Kev. Very cool. Yeah, so, you know, we always try to qualify these sightings, Bill, on who saw them, And, you know, what's their knowledge of wildlife and stuff like that? How credible are they, generally speaking, right? Mm -hmm. So I I thought this is pretty interesting. The first uh, person that they cite in this article is retired forest ranger Tom Card. And he said he heard a tremendously scary sound in the woods while at work back in the 1970s. He said when he saw two frightened rangers who, by the way, were armed with sidearms, running away from the noise. Card said he didn't know what it was, but he never went back in there to find out at that point in time. He said it was a wailing, howling kind of scream, and uh, they were a little unnerved, more than a little unnerved, because they never heard anything like this from any of the other wildlife in the park or anything they'd ever heard of outside of the park as well. So he saw two other rangers that were armed fleeing from the woods? Running running away from it while he heard this wailing, howling kind of scream. Wow. I mean, come on. So like I would initially, Bill, you know, being a bit of an outdoorsman myself, when I read something like this normally... I'd say, oh, it was a coyote. You know, when you first hear a coyote, you're like, what the hell? Like, is a, is a woman getting murdered across the street from your house? And then you see the coyote. But this guy's a forest ranger. Like, he knows what a coyote sounds like. Yeah, and let me tell you something. When you're running while you have a gun, you're <laughs> obviously more than a little bit freaked out by whatever happened. Yeah. You know, either a Panzer tank showed up coming over a rise and all you had was a pea shooter, or that thing really uh, got under their skin when they heard that. Did did he say, did he talk to them? Did they see anything? No, he doesn't mention that, he, that they saw anything. Wow. But they were running. Well, I'll tell you, you know, everybody likes to think they're tough as nails, but... Uh, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You realize suddenly how small and insignificant you are in certain situations. And obviously, that howl or scream or whatever got the best of those dudes. Absolutely. Wow. And yeah, we have a few more accounts that come off a website called Weird New Jersey where they collect a lot of this stuff. And I don't think that's like the uh, state tourism site, but it could be. I mean, it is New Jersey. (laughs) Sorry, folks. Yeah, well, you know. (laughs) A lot of people think Jersey is a little weird. (laughs) I'm just saying. I don't think we have a weird North Carolina site. Just saying. You want to create one? (laughs) (laughs) But like, uh, like other Bigfoot sightings around the country... Uh, um, Big Red Eye is often described as being, you know, this very large bipedal creature covered in long hair from head to toe, always seen, you know, bipedal, so seen standing and walking upright. Um, But it does have these glowing red eyes. Uh So some of the accounts that are on this site, uh, I'm going to run through here. So... Over a period of two weeks back in 1977, there were a lot of reports of strange moaning sounds and eerie haunting screams Mm. throughout the night along the road in Sussex County. Now get this, Bill. The the name of the road is called Wolf Pit Road. Mm. (laughs) 
I want to live on Wolf Pit Road. Yeah, and what's with Wolf Pit? Where does this name come from? Know. Wolf and Pit. I don't know. I, I don't know. One word, I, Wolf Pit. I, what was that other one we had? The Devil's Bowl? You remember <laughs> yeah, that Devil's with that Bowl. freaking weird creature up in uh, yeah. Yeah. upstate New York? What was the name of that creature? I mean, Bill, you live on Goat Man Drive, don't you? <laughs> 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 yeah, Goat Man Drive. Myself, I'm on Dog Man Path. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the street sign has a picture of a wolf with a sickle in his hand, dripping blood. <laughs> and it says, welcome. Yeah, welcome. It's got to say welcome. <laughs> wolf pit. Ay, ay, ay. It says dead end on the road, and then it's somebody crossed it out and put not dead end. <laughs> Come on in. It's fine. <laughs> Come meet the dog man with the sickle. But anyway, they talk about these wailing noises that they were constant and went on for hours through the night. And they describe it as some type of huge primate that made these noises. And it woke several people out of a sound sleep and it reminded them of something straight out of a horror movie, Hmm. unlike anything they had ever heard before. Yeah. And this one guy, J.D. Grant, he talks about it as a horrible, blood-curdling, wailing sound that he's never heard before. Mm. And he says specifically, I've heard coyotes, bears, fox, and it wasn't like anything like that because it had this low guttural sound that went right through you. Mm. Wow. I mean, again, that's pretty interesting. This is somebody that knows what the other animals sound like and has lived there for a long time. Yeah, and getting back to the two rangers uh, fleeing the scene, obviously something that intense, uh, a smart person is not going to wait around for it to make its face known to them. I mean, if I hear that in the woods, I'm not jogging towards it. If you catch my drift. No. Oh, yeah. Jeez. So another person talks about seeing it in 1996 when her and a friend were walking along Leighton Road. And they encountered a creature by the side of the road. And they said, I knew it wasn't a bear. It was standing upright. It was very lean. And it was humanoid looking. It was. It had been there the whole time watching our approach. There was no noise, otherwise we have heard we would have heard something. That big crashing through the underbrush. It was tall with long shaggy fur and glowing red eyes. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. I mean, what do you do, Kev? Just put yourself in those shoes. You run across something like that, you're out hiking. What's going to be maybe your second instinct after you're freezing your tracks to look for a second? Uh, probably, uh, you know, rack the AR-15 that hopefully I have yeah, over my back. Yeah. <laughs> with the 40 clip of 5.56 five, ammo. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, first thing you got to do is rack it. Yeah, know? rack it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm racking it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, fella. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, fella. <laughs> you might kill me, but you're going to have 40 chunks of lead in you before that. Here they come, walking down the street. I keep asking them about the shooting range for for uh, Bigfoot cut at Bigfoot targets. They don't have any. Though. Well, tell them they need to get I'm some. Have to make some up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's another shop job for you. You can make up some Bigfoot uh, targets and bring <laughs> them down to the range. Everybody will love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to do a nice job on them, though. You know, let them hang them down range and let everybody have a couple of cracks at them. Yeah. All right, we got another sighting here. Uh-huh. So this one, this person talks about the fact that they recently moved to Sussex County, mm-hmm. and they were surprised to hear of such a thing as the big red eye. And I didn't really believe in it or let it bother me. I'm originally from Essex County in New Jersey, so they moved from Essex to Sussex, 
And uh, the only thing for me to be afraid of in Essex County was to be a victim of a drive-by shooting <laughs> or being verbally attacked by, uh, you know, one of my crazy neighbors. <laughs> So he says, I was on my way home from the dentist, so this has got to be daytime, right? And was getting ready to pull in my driveway when I noticed the figure of a tall man, maybe seven feet tall, and it was covered in hair. I didn't pay any attention at first because I thought it was a deer, but as I got closer, I could see it was far bigger than a deer. But as, but as quickly as I saw it, it vanished. <laughs> what a- did he just say he wanted to be a dentist? <laughs> no, Herbie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Come to. Come on, be- <laughs> that Bumble's hungry. I don't want to make toys. I want to be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look. It sounds like a few people are uh, uh, getting a more than an eyeful. Of- there are, Bill, there are a lot of accounts of this creature. I mean, my only complaint is I think it should be called Big Red Eyes rather than Big Red Eye. Yeah. So any of you Jersey folks, you know, also please write in at BigfootTerrorInTheWoods.com, contact us, and let me know why it's singular rather than plural. Yeah. I guess somebody, obviously somebody along the way, uh, gave it that title, and it just stuck, you know. Eh, I've seen Big Red Eye the other day, you know. Somebody saw a Big Red Eye over in, uh, you know, the Pine Barrens or something, you know. I could see- I'd get it. I'd, I'd, get, I'd understand it better if it was down here in the southeast. Yeah. But, you know, in Jersey, I think they'd call it Big Red Eyes. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it just shows you, though, I was talking— uh, Kev, did you did you share the email about the uh, the uh, kids down south and the rocks hitting the shed of that building, the storage building? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We the were woman ta- writing about it. Yeah, yeah we yeah, were yeah, yeah. we were talking about that. Uh, I actually spoke to that uh, young fella's mom, and uh, I asked her to call me, and she was apologetic getting on the phone. She did call me. She said the boy, prior to her calling me, said that his belief now was that it was done by a friend of his. Uh, uh, but then she broke into another story uh, that mm-hmm. she had just run across of a uh, Bigfoot sighting uh, at another person's house that she knew of. And I was just like, well, you know, I'm glad you called for two reasons, to tell the truth about one and to tell the truth about the other one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, so you don't know. I mean, you don't know where these things are going to show up. And, you know, she said when she was growing up, uh, she had seen the Leonard Nimoy stuff and the Patty film and always thought in her mind that this Bigfoot thing, if it's real, uh, lives in the Pacific Northwest. And she said, never did I think where I live in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, New Jersey, New York, never did I think it was here. And, uh, but apparently the creature is here or creatures are here. So it's uh, yes. it's interesting, you know. Speaking of creatures, the choppers are coming over. If you hear, them. let me see. I hear, I hear a little droning sound. Yeah, they're heading away from here now. Yeah, it's a great sound. The sound of freedom. <laughs> I wish they were allowed to like run off dummy rounds coming over a neighborhood just to fucking snap people, <laughs> snap people out of it, you know. I'll tell you what, if they're ever going to do it, they're, gonna, they're doing it out at the beach here in North Carolina. They, they come over, Bill. They, they, uh, the V-22 Ospreys were coming over the other day when I was out there before Christmas, and they had the uh, gangplank open on the rear of these things, four of them, mm-hmm. you know, about 100 feet, and the guys are standing out there on the back on the gangplank. 
Wow. They're getting set up. While they're buzzing down the beach. Wow. You know, I guess they just want them to get used to that break into fear factor, you know? I mean, they're just practicing. That's the Marine Corps, you know, out here. And they're, they're the, you know, here on North Carolina, most of the first uh, first responder, so to speak, armed forces, you know, whether it's the, you know, 82nd Airborne, you know, the Marines, all the different divisions, the Green Berets, et cetera, they're all stationed here, mm-hmm. you know, so they got to keep them active and buzzing around and and they know nobody nobody complains you know on the north carolina coast cuz they really do talk about it like it's the sound of freedom yeah. you know love seeing them come by i mean i'm waving to them all the time you know yeah whenever they come over yeah no it's definitely it's pretty cool you know and uh, uh kudos to you guys for your service uh a lot of guys can and do lose their lives or limbs and we appreciate it no doubt about it. All right, Bill, what kind of account you got to go with our Jersey Big Red Eye? Well, this is actually uh, pretty incredible. <clears throat> no less incredible than all of the accounts, as I always say. But uh, when you hear this, it's just going to stoke the fire within you uh, that what I say is true. People see something because they're looking. This following strange sighting was told to me by Tyrone and Minnie Brown, two business owners from the Chicago area that ran across something very odd on their way home from a show one evening in January. This is what they saw. First of all, Bill, we want to thank you personally for giving us an outlet to tell our story without ridicule. As we told you on the phone when we first spoke, the two of us run a music business in Chicago, which for the sake of this sighting is all we would like to say about that. On the night of what was to become our Bigfoot sighting, we had been given a set of tickets by a customer of ours to see the play Guys and Dolls, which at the time was touring the Chicago area. Having left work early in the day, which was Friday, we traveled back to our home about 45 minutes outside of the city to freshen up before heading back for the performance. Uh, Where we lived would be called the suburbs, and there are still quite a few open areas and fields in the surrounding townships. On this particular Friday, it was a full moon, not a cloud in the sky, a fact that will come into play shortly. After having traveled back into the city and sat through the play, the two of us went downtown for a drink before returning home for the night. It was about 12 p.m. when we had exited the city proper. And we were about 20 minutes into our ride home as we drove under this moonlight. The full moon was directly overhead. So bright was it that you could have driven with your lights out. Adding to that illumination was the fact that there was a couple of feet of snow on the ground, reflecting the light of the moon in every direction. I'm sure all of us can relate to that. We had just turned the corner onto a road that borders a huge open field, (coughs) which used to be a farm, but hadn't been farmed in many years, the owners having passed away. Now, Minnie was the designated driver. I was sitting shotgun as we turned the corner and she began to accelerate. It was at that moment that my eyes were drawn to what I believed was an individual cross-country skiing under the moonlight, and I said as much to Minnie. She immediately touched the brakes with nobody being behind us, and we were now doing maybe five miles an hour watching what we believed to be a skier. After some chatter about what a cool thing it was that this person was doing and this and that, I was the first to say, wait a minute. That dude isn't wearing any skis. 
We were now at a dead stop on the shoulder, watching intently. This field was likely a good 50 acres or so, and it was completely covered in snow, with this individual, or so we thought, somewhere around midfield, quite some distance away from us, nevertheless fully illuminated and in plain sight. Minnie then said, no skis and no poles either. What was tricking us initially was the gliding movement with which this thing or whatever it was, was moving. It was very linear and machine-like, with what appeared to be very long and straight strides, followed by equally long and methodical arm swings. Now, the snow at the edge of the field was about four feet deep, half of which was caused by the plows coming through. But we had said it must be two feet deep out in the field, basing that entirely on what was in our yard just 20 minutes away. We sat in the car for about 10 minutes watching as whatever we were looking at traveled the remaining distance of the field and disappearing into the trees. I was the first to breach the question. Did we just see a Bigfoot? Minnie shook her head in disbelief. The following morning, I had to open a business. This was Minnie's weekend off. I left early, and Minnie made no mention of what she had up her sleeve. She had been bitten by the bug, and during the day, without saying so much as a word to me what her plan was, she put on her boots and went back to the field in broad daylight. Now, this is Minnie talking. Tyrone had fallen asleep early. And to be honest with you, once we were back home, not much more was said about what we had seen. He took a shower and went to bed while I stayed up till 3 a.m., tossing it back and forth in my mind, this idea of possibly having seen a Bigfoot. At 10 a.m., I jumped into my outback and went back to the field, but nothing could have prepared me for what was to happen. The first thing I realized now standing next to the truck was just how far away what we were looking at was. Remember, we thought we were looking at a man or woman skiing, so our size perspective was way off. If it was something, say, twice as big as a human that we were looking at. Secondly, when I stepped over the plow's berm and into the actual snow in the field, it was close to 30 inches, not 24 and I was in it up to mid-thigh. What we saw seemed to be on top of it and moved very effortlessly through it. Nevertheless, I was determined and began to trudge in the direction of where we had first seen it. The day was bitter cold, but still as I began to make my way out into the field, it took me almost 20 minutes to get to the point where I was seeing where it had walked And it had taken numerous breaks along the way. And I had taken numerous breaks along the way. So she was struggling to get there. As I stood there and looked back at my car, I had to have walked almost a mile. And my car looked like a dot. Speaking for myself the night before, I thought I was looking at a man at about maybe 150 yards. And now standing here, I realized that the proportions of what we had seen must have been massive to appear the way it did at this distance. Looking back and away from my position in the field, the tracks which it had laid down came from the highway as far as I could see. This was the very road that we had turned off off of to get alongside the field. And it had traversed the entire width of the field and quickly, making it appear virtually effortless in the process. Every impression where it stepped was caved in and filled with snow. But to our eyes at night, it didn't appear to be much above its ankles. At least that's the way we perceived it. 
I did my best to first measure the distance between the strides based on my strides, after which I checked the measurement when I was back home. It was very difficult for me just to walk, if you could call it walking, because I was more or less pushing through the snow. I later realized it was close to 10 feet per step that this thing was taking, and quickly. I then cleared an area around one of the filled-in tracks and carefully removed the snow. Where have we heard that before? From around it until I reached the bottom, doing my utmost not to destroy the evidence at the base. And what I found was amazing. Sitting at the bottom, virtually frozen, from what must have been the compression of the weight of this creature, was a gigantic footprint. As I held my fingers as wide open as I could and touching my thumbs together in the middle, the print measured wider than my two hands, a measurement which I later calculated to be 20 to 23 inches long and two hand widths wide. It was then that my phone rang at the office, and it was Minnie. This is Tyrone now. Minnie calling me. She said to me, you're not going to believe where I am. And I said, where? She said, I'm standing in the middle of the field where we saw that thing last night. And I can't believe what I found. Well, as you would imagine, I went ballistic for a few seconds before finally calming down, knowing my wife to be a strong-willed woman. She went on to tell me everything you just heard. The next day, Sunday, we went to church early, and as soon as we got home, I changed gear and headed out into the field, and Minnie came back with me. This time, we both had a little easier time of it because Minnie had been the trail breaker the day before, but it still took us 15 minutes to walk out there. There was no wind, and the print she had measured the day before was still perfectly frozen, fully intact, just as she had described it. And all of the tracks it had made were nearly in a perfect line, one foot placed directly in front of the other, as far as we could see from the wood line to the road. When I tell you I was blown away, that's an understatement. I was stupefied, just trying to come to grips with having seen this thing and how big it was. The way our car appeared in the distance and the fact that this thing looked like a man at a hundred yards, God only knows how big it was. It probably was more than 10 feet tall and 1,500 pounds for all I know. We left the field that day knowing we saw a Bigfoot. And every night and day since then, we're looking for it when driving, hoping to see it again. The thought of it standing in the field, frightening. But after we'd gotten over it, we realized what a remarkable thing it was we had encountered. Very few people have heard this story as we have told it to you. And out of those few, I don't believe any of them believed what we had said. What do you think, Kev? That is wild. Right in the suburbs of uh, Chicago. Not that hard to believe either, having been out there in the suburbs of Chicago. I mean, there's a lot of country around there. Yeah, and but under wild. under the moonlight, perfect spectacle in a white, snow laden field. Huge dark colored silhouette stomping along. Kind of weird how. Well, it, yeah, and by the way, how could you not go back there and take a look? You know, I mean, his wife going back there, you or I would do the same thing. Absolutely, especially in broad daylight. Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily go back there at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. The next day, why not? Yeah. Go take a look. Let's see what we saw. Yeah, it was only 20 minutes from their house, so they say, and, you know, let's go yeah. take a peek. You know, I'm sure there was a lot more people driving around in the daytime. Yeah. Uh, you know, but just yeah. go out and take a look, see what we see, you know, and that's yeah. what they saw. I mean, what an opportunity to see footprints, right? Yeah, and the reason I said where we heard that before, you remember the snowmobilers encounter I went through a couple of months ago? Oh, yeah. Those kids uh, trailed their snowmobiles up, and they found those footprints following that creek. Yeah, and no doubt about it. Then they 
the one kid gradually pulled the snow away and uncovered the same thing, that hard pack, frozen bare footprint down in the bottom of the hole. Yeah. So that's interesting, though. Uh, and Very cool. Perception is everything, right? They think they're looking once at 100, 150 yards. And uh, Minnie said that having hiked it, she felt she walked a mile. Yeah, well, when you look, I mean, it's the obvious thing of scale, Bill. You're yep. you're looking at something that you think is a person, but it's almost twice as big as a person. Yeah, and they think this thing is gliding on top of the snow on skis, and it was walking in the same 30 inches of snow that was up to her mid-thigh. Exactly. And she thought it was like up to its ankles, you know, obviously. Exactly wrong altogether no matter how you look at it you know yeah i mean an issue of scale <laughs> very very bizarre but yeah. i'll tell you something man however big that thing was man it was freaking enormous yeah uh whatever they saw that day was one big mother walking mm -hmm. across that field and uh yeah. That's kind of freaky, man. When I hear these things and you think about running across one of them or having one of them pop out of the woods on you or in front of your car, I mean, come on. Again, man. I can't imagine, Bill. I mean, hopefully it happens one of these days in a safe setting, but uh, I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing you say, right, is, all right, calm down, Bill. Take out your phone and take the best steady-handed picture you can. <laughs> <clears throat> so all the people can say that's not real look how steady it is <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, you can't win uh, you know the, 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 the rocky pictures are why are they so rocky the steady pictures are how can it be so steady you know but uh, yeah some truth to that now remember folks you know if you've seen something say something and again, you can contact us at BigfootTerrorInTheWoods.com. Hit the contact link. I'll certainly call you, ask you to call me. We'll have a good conversation. Uh, and to all those people who have chatted with me, which there are many, many, and you all know who you are, I thank you. You're very gracious, great listeners, very complimentary. Uh, Kev, the people love what we're doing, so we got to keep doing it. Oh, no doubt about it. It keeps us going, too. Yep. We love hearing from you. It's fantastic. We, love, we also love to hear that we're helping you out in some weird way, you know, entertaining you, whatever. Yep. We're doing the best we can. <laughs> yeah. We're all making the best of the situation we find ourselves in. Excuse me. Uh, all right, Bill. Speaking of the best, we have some great listener mail. Uh, this week. And this one coming in from Judy from Georgia. It's one of my all time favorite sets of uh, sets of email. And maybe it's because the title of it is If Bigfoot Were Southern. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you may not have a great appreciation for this, Bill. You know, and again, you new listeners out there, my brother and I are brothers, real brothers. We were separated at birth. One of us was raised by a Bigfoot. We won't say which one. And uh, I live in North Carolina now for a long time and uh, have been off a of Long Island for, geez, I don't want to say how long, but 30-something years probably, maybe 40 years. I don't know. 30-something uh, years. And uh, so this woman writes in, Judy from Georgia, and she says, If Bigfoot were Southern. Uh -huh. And she says, hey, guys, happy new year to you both. I saw this article, and if you haven't seen it, some of these are pretty funny. I love your podcast. Thank you, Judy from Georgia. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, I picked out some of the best here. Okay. And the first one says, if Bigfoot were Southern, he'd say, thank you, ma'am or sir, after he swipes your Yeti cooler and carries it out into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd send you a proper thank you note after carrying your Yeti cooler out into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> and make, may I add one to that? Sure. If Bigfoot was Southern, 
He'd say, thank you, sir, as he pulled the screw out of your still. (laughs) (laughs) And another one here, she says, if Bigfoot were Southern, if you stumbled into his lair, he'd offer you a glass of sweet tea or a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi, depending on what state you're in. Georgia would be Coca-Cola. North Carolina would be Pepsi, of course. Right after you stopped screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and as she says, if Bigfoot was Southern, he'd take off his baseball cap before sitting at the dinner table. Otherwise, Nana Squatch would slap it right off the top of his head. That's right. You mind your <laughs> manners, boy. <laughs> says if Big, she goes on and says if Bigfoot was Southern, he'd never throw saplings or rocks willy nilly, or attack campsites unannounced. It just isn't done in the South. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny stuff. And if Bigfoot were Southern, he'd be mannerly and hold the RV door for you as you run screaming out of it into the night. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of one of my favorites here, uh, especially here in uh, football, college football bowl season. She says, if Bigfoot were Southern, he'd be modest and want to wear clothing, probably a, an SEC football team shirt. And she's got like seven XL size. <laughs> yeah, you might be undersized that seven X. <laughs> now, the question is, though, uh, which university would he be wearing? Uh, somebody from the SEC. I mean, I'd say it's Alabama, but, Same. you know, that's just me. Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, she says if Bigfoot was Southern, he'd never get away with all those blurry photos. Nana Squatch wants non-blurry photo where he's wearing a dress shirt and not slouching, and make sure he's smiling and acting like he wants to be there in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard much about Nana Squatch, Bill. Uh, no, you know Nana Squatch. You know, I don't. I don't know if I want to run into Nana Squatch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh yeah, yeah. But you oh, know what? Good. It's it's. it's Really funny, you know, uh, how many people uh, buy into the Bigfoot phenom, either tongue-in-cheek or full-blown believers, investigators, hunters, whatever they want to call themselves. It's it's really kind of touched a lot of people in a strange kind of way, you know? Oh, no doubt. I mean, we were, my bride and I were just riding, taking a different path back to the house uh, yesterday. uh uh-huh. And we took a different turn, only about a mile away from the house, and somebody had like an eight-foot-tall, you know, plasma torch cut out of a sheet of steel, all rusty, uh-huh. of a Bigfoot silhouette in their front yard. And I was like, whoa, there's his Bigfoot. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's funny, you know. You know, when you see something like that, no kidding, just once in a while, if you're able to, and you see somebody, just say, hey, you know Like your Bigfoot. Seen anything? Oh, yeah, Yeah. all the time. You know, introduce yourself. Uh, You never know. They may be like, whoa, you're KJ. You know, why don't you come in for some tea and let's go shoot some. (laughs) A little sweet tea. (laughs) All right, now we're going west Uh over to Tennessee. Yeah. Corey from Tennessee. Mm. I love this one. The subject is wampum cat. Mm. And Corey writes, hello, I'm a big fan of the show. I've been listening to you and other cryptid shows for over five years now. Uh And I thought I had heard about it all until today. We've all heard the word cattywampus. But did you know that there's a cryptid tied to the Cherokee legend known as cattywampus or wampus cat? I've only researched it a little, but it's definitely interesting. I think you should discuss it in the show. All the best from East Tennessee, where, by the way, we all carry more gun than we think we'll ever need. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, Kev. I have heard of the Wampus Cat, Corey, and it is on the list. So you will hear about the Wampus Cow. Wampus Cat sometime in the near future. And by the way, I have never heard of the Wampus Cat. You haven't heard of that? No. You, have you heard of Catty Wampus? Never. Really? Yeah, so it's it's got to be on a hit parade. If it involves high strangeness and uh, weird cryptid activity, we've got to dig into it a little bit. All right, we're on it. Coming from the volunteer state. There you go. Go Vols. And then uh, uh, Michael, this is the one you referenced early on. Uh He writes in with the subject of supporting the podcast. He says, hey, WJ and KJ. Uh He said, it's a couple of days after Christmas, and I didn't stuff my stocking with goodies this Mm -hmm. year. Instead, I stuffed my phone with all your digital books in the series Bigfoot Terry in the Woods 1 through 8. I love the way I can adjust the font size on my Kindle app and a great read to have in case I'm ever stuck somewhere where I have a little bit of free time. There you go. Supporting the show by purchasing books and spreading the word. I have all your paperbacks, and now I have the digital copies, too. You guys always have such great shows. Keep it up, Michael. That's what I'm talking about, double dipping. (laughs) <laughs> he's got books, he's got ebooks, and supporting this show. That's Mike. Mike, if you were here, I'd shake your hand. Mm. And then I might take your wallet. <laughs> Watch out, Mike. <laughs> and by the way, Mike, and everybody else that's listening, I have to settle a score. Because I was watching the news tonight, Kev, and they had a little piece on all the people who, celebrity that passed away this 2021. And... That's that time of the year. Yep. And it was Dusty Hill from ZZ Top. Oh, okay. They had them standing up doing, Every woman loves a sharp dress man. (laughs) And they had the camera right on Dusty Hill. And then they were doing that little weird jig where they were moving their knees in and out like a stick man. (laughs) They had a great gig going on. You know what I mean? The 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 look, the three pieces, the the approach, the sound. They were very unique. One of those videos too, where they would spin the guitars, right? Yeah, I mean, just like uh, just kind of unique, almost a little corny, like, but you know, obviously, oh, one hundred percent. People bought into it, hook, line, and sink it. A whole freaking deal. It was like, what the heck have we got here? Wow. Anyways, very cool. All right, we got one more letter, Bill. All right, and it comes from Bill from Missouri, and it's about the Missouri Bigfoot. He says, uh-huh. "Dear Bill and Cav." I wrote to you a while back and talked to WJ, but I've not sat down to email any of our encounters. He says, I live outside of Louisiana, Missouri, on a farm that's been in my family for seven generations. First off, that's amazing. Kev? Yeah. Missouri. Get it right. Oh, Missouri. Say Oregon. All right. (laughs) <laughs> he says, I heard stories from several family members of the family that that had seen a giant hairy man growing up in the early 1990s. I started having my own experience. We lived in the suburbs of St. Louis. At the time, I spent almost every weekend camping with friends on our farm. In the late fall of 1990, I was on an ATV and thought I had seen something, but I had been drinking, so I just <laughs> wrote it off to seeing things. We've all been there. <laughs> Fast forward a year yeah. later to the spring of 1991, a friend and myself were heading up camping for a few days. As we turned off onto a mile-long farm road, the animals were stirred up. A deer came jumping out of the corn next to the road and almost landed on the hood of my Jeep. When we got to the campsite, a big storm was getting ready to move in, so my friends started setting up tents, setting up tents, and getting gear while I took the ATV to gather firewood. 
as I got to got to the back part of the farm, I passed a bend in the creek and I saw this large creature on the creek bank. I was around 25 feet away and the creek was down an eight foot drop off from where I was. The creature was squatting like it was getting a drink or trying to catch minnows or crawfish. It immediately turned its head and made eye contact for what seemed like forever. I was frozen and could not move until it broke eye contact and turned its head away from me. It jumped up the eight foot bank running off on two legs, um, and I immediately turned the ATV around and went back to the campsite. After calming down, I grabbed my shotgun and my friend grabbed his rifle, and we went back to the area where I saw it. Uh We followed the tracks back to the creek at a little ways down the creek, but it was getting dark and we did not have great flashlights, so we both felt like it was too dangerous and something might ambush us if we went back there without good lights. Mm. Since that day, I've had several other encounters and ended up building a house and moving there. My wife, son, and son-in-law have since seen it, but that's a story I I still have to tell. Oh, he says, that's a story I will let them tell you. To this day, I can still remember those eyes clearly. I spend most every day on that property and have no fear of this animal, but I do carry a Ruger snub nose 454 Alaskan <laughs> just in case. <laughs> As Bill would say, I always carry more gun than I hope I will need. That's right. And you better start uh, saddling up with a Tennessee toothpick. <laughs> or is it an Arkansas toothpick? <laughs> I got one of them myself, Kev, this giant freaking buoy knife. Ooh. I'll tell you, man, if you pull out of... Remember that guy, the crocodile? What, who was that guy, Crocodile Dundee? Crocodile Dundee. Remember him? That's not oh, yeah. a knife. This is a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know who? All right, Bill. Great show. Good to be back in the new year. This is the first podcast of season four, by the way. Uh huh. Woohoo! Yes, sir. March. Get out on. the noisemaker. Thanks, folks, for sticking with us. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we, uh, I think we're putting it out there, Kev. Uh, I know we're always interested in trying to uh, present things in a certain way. Maybe some people aren't used to our. Blend of humor, <laughs> but we don't really care, do we? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're having a good time, folks, and it's always a pleasure for me to uh, chime in with you. And by the way, I did a little interview uh, a couple of two, three weeks ago on Night Dreams Talk Radio with Gary Anderson. So you might want to tune into that. Uh, one day and give a listen to uh, the interview. Uh, good time was had by all. Uh, it was a good interview. I'm going to go back on there again in February. And uh, very interesting. You know, uh, Gary himself uh, had a tremendous Bigfoot encounter, uh, which we came right out of the gate talking about on the interview. So give a listen to that. Night Dreams very Talk cool. Radio. And, by the way, if you find yourself walking through the woods of New Jersey and suddenly you're confronted by Big Red Eye, you better hope one thing, my friend, that you're carrying more gun than you think you're going to need. Sleep tight.